On the field, the Wildcats are poised to run onto the field. Here comes the Wildcats fight song as Riverdale has won the toss. The Wildcats are deciding which way they want to go. The cheerleaders are forming a corridor. The Wildcats are preparing to run onto their field, wearing the uniforms we saw them wear at Farragut. The white jerseys with red numerals. And this game is just a few moments away. Joe Gaddis, head football coach of the Wildcats trying to take his team to the state championship game for the second time in four years, talking it over with his senior place kicker, Eduardo Rivera, and the kick team down on the field. The Wildcats will be moving from left to right as they'll pre they're actually preparing for the pop-up kick. Back to receive the kick back at the 10-yard line is Alvin Duke. They call him the Duke of Dale here at Riverdale High School. In reference to the old 50s song. As we're about to get underway. Both fans on both sides of the field on their feet extremely loud and this ball game is about to get underway from Middle Tennessee State. Eduardo has the ball on the tee. The officials are set. The clock is set. Eduardo prepares and let's see what he does. Here's the little pooch kick. He gets it up in the air. It's high. A fair catch signaled for and made at the 35 yard line and that's where the Riverdale Warriors will take over. First down, 10 yards to go. That may very well have been Eduardo Rivera's best pooch kick of the year right there, David. He got that very, very high. He let the speed people get down there. They were right in the face of the guy that caught the ball. He had no chance to return it, made a smart, fair catch, was able to catch the ball, but if he did, Oak Ridge was right there to recover. No return yardage, which is a big key against this Riverdale team. And onto the field will come the Riverdale Warrior offense led by their quarterback, Corey Carney, a 5'10", 180-pound senior. The fullback is Mark is Smith. The tailback is Alvin Duke. An official's timeout as the officials are saying start play and up to the line of scrimmage will come Corey Carney. First down, 10 yards to go. Scoreless ball game. The first offensive play of the ball game from the 35-yard line. Murfreesboro Riverdale facing a five-man front for the Wildcats. Carney hands it off to the fullback who breaks free across the 40. That's Marcus Smith. Gain of about five. Tripped up at the line of scrimmage, but did gain about five on the play. And he was going an awful long way, David, if he didn't get tripped up right there by John Dickens. He had a lot of green in front of him, and the guy weighs 240 pounds. He's got some big-time speed, but somebody got down low, was able to trip him up, and he fell down, but a lot of green in front of him. Good tackle, however, by John Dickens to stop him for a four-and-a-half-yard gain. Wide to the right side will go Ryan Maloney, single man actually two receivers to left, which is the near side. Second down, about four and a half yards to go. Carney the under center from the 40-yard line. He'll roll to his left, turn it up the field, gets away across the 50. Breaks to the outside, 45 to the 40. Runs out of bounds at around the 33-yard line. Fine run. The option quarterback, Corey Carney, turned it up the field and picks up the first down. Well, welcome to the real world for Oak Ridge, David. They got to see it firsthand right there. Uh, the outstanding speed and, and cut-up ability of quarterback Corey Carney. And you know, uh, Oak Ridge had that def play defense nicely, but Corey Carney is an outstanding option quarterback, and he was just able to sort of give a little head fake like he was going to pitch the ball off and then cut it up, had blazing speed to get to the outside, but Oak Ridge was there as he uh, picks up 28 yards, but uh, Oak Ridge had a defense nicely. It was just an outstanding run, an outstanding fake by their quarterback. First and 10 from the 32-yard line, two receivers to the right, a single man to the left. Carney from the Oak Ridge 32 will hand it off to his fullback again who gets a big hole across the 25. Down he goes to the 23-yard line, close to another Riverdale first down. Just power straight ahead running by Marcus Smith, their 5'10", 235-pound fullback, and he's about a yard short of the first down. They're going to call an official timeout to bring the chains on the field. We'll be back in 30 seconds. First down, 10 yards to go for the Riverdale Warriors as they put the ball down at the 22-yard line. They've had three offensive plays, and they've moved from the 35-yard line all the way inside the Oak Ridge 25. The ball officially resting at the 22. Up to the line they'll come. Griffin wide to the right side, along with number 25 for them, Fernando Bryant, from the I formation. First down, 10 yards to go. Carney under center once again. Five-man front for the Wildcats. Up to the line they'll come. First down, 10 yards to go. Riverdale at the 22, and he drops back the pass. Across the way, wide up a man at the five-yard line. He fumbles it. It's in the end zone. Recovered, I believe, by the Wildcats, but they're going to put him down at around the oh, four-yard line. Oh, no. The Oak Ridge fans don't like the call. The ball was fumbled in the end zone. They're going to say that he was down. It's first and goal for the Riverdale Warriors. Oh, what a big break, uh, David. i tell you what, I, I, you hate to start talking about the referees already, but that, that – that was clearly a fumble. I don't think there's any way in the world that he was down. Looked like, I don't think it was DeAndre Johnson, maybe Brett Kennedy came in with a great tackle. 
caused a fumble and went in the end zone, but uh, they said he was down. I don't, I don't agree. Full house backfield for the Warriors. First down goal to go at the four-yard line. Under center is Carney once again, and he'll hand it off to his tailback, who's hit and tackled on a nice open field tackle by the Wildcats. It looks like Mike Gibson, perhaps, there for the stop. Makes the stop at the two-yard line. On the carry was Alvin Duke. It'll be second down, goal to go at the two. That's a good play right there by Mike Gibson. David, the sophomore, stepping up in a big situation. He's isolated against a guy that's already rushed for over 1,000 yards and scored 35 touchdowns. Uh, a guy that's very, very fast, and Mike Gibson comes up and is not afraid to make the play, brings him down short of the end zone. Second down, goal to go at the two-yard line, full house backfield for the Warriors. Quarterback Carney under center, everybody else on the line. Here's the handoff straight ahead to the one-yard line. It'll be third down, goal to go at the one as, once again, Duke carries the ball. Tackled it around the one-yard line. We're down to 9.46 and counting here in the first quarter of a scoreless ball game. Here's a big defensive play about to take place for the Wildcats. The ball officially put down at the one-yard line. We're going to be third down, goal to go for the Riverdale Warriors. And a timeout is asked for by Riverdale. Let's take one ourselves. Scoreless ball game. They have the ball at the one. We'll be back in 30 seconds. Corey Carney to the line. Full house backfield for the Riverdale Warriors. Carney under center, hands it off. No, he rolls right. Here's the pitch, it's a fumble! Here come the Wildcats! Yes! They recovered at the 15-yard line, and Oak Ridge will take over. First down, 10 yards to go. That's exactly the play Oak Ridge needed, David. A huge play, and the Wildcat fans are going crazy. This Riverdale team is not used to making mistakes. They're not used to making turnovers. Oak Ridge comes up with the play they needed on the goal line, forced the turnover, and gets some momentum back in this ball game after Riverdale had marched down the field. Well, it really was. You know, we talked to somebody before, and they guy said, hey, Murfreesboro Riverdale will not get beat unless they beat themselves. So that right there is a huge, huge, huge play. First down and 10 from about the 16-yard line. And up to the line will come the Wildcats from the I formation. Receivers left and right starting this drive at the 16. Jeff Miner sneaks the ball forward for about a yard. It'll be second down, nine yards to go. The most first downs any team this season has picked up the most first downs against Riverdale's defense is three in one ball game. That's to me an incredible stat as the Warriors have an outstanding defense. The Wildcats have the ball officially at the 18 yard line. It'll be second down, nine yards to go. Eight minutes, 46 seconds to play. We're in the first quarter of a scoreless game. Wide to the right side, Tory Yancey, Keith Thrift wide to the left. Oak Ridge with the backfield split. William Dickey and Sean Williams in the backfield. Here's the handoff to the tailback. Opens up the hole across the 20. Up to the 22-yard line. Gain of about three. It'll be third down and about five yards to go. Sean Williams, David, that time got a good hole on the right side. And, and those are going to have to be the kind of gains he's going to get because Riverdale's not going to give up the 80 and, and 70 and 60-yard runs. They're too fast. They're too quick on the outside. And they're just too good a football team. But that time he found a hole. He, he picked and chose his way and picked up four, maybe five yards on the play. And it was an outstanding run. Riverdale was there to make a good, so, solid, hard tackle, but a good gain for the Wildcats. Third down, then about five yards to go. Brett Kennedy wide to the left side, wide to the right side, Torrey Yancey. Oak Ridge from the eye. Jeff Miner will pass, has time, goes across the way, complete. No, it's incomplete. At the 33-yard line, Wildcats tight end Roy Howard had the catch, would have been a first down. Wildcats had trouble the last time the two teams made, met. Wildcats dropped about four or five passes, and that time Roy had it for a first down, just couldn't quite hold on to it. It'll, it'll be Roy Howard to punt the ball away. Yeah, Jeff Miner did a really good job. He, he had to elude two or three different uh, people, stepped up in the pocket, threw a great pass, uh, unfortunately, Roy Howard did not bring uh, hold on to it. Brings up a fourth down punting. Uh, fourth trial. down and five. Here's the snap. Roy Howard gets the punt away. It's a line drive kick. Takes a good Oak Ridge bounce and will roll out of bounds at around the 40-yard line, around the 39 of Riverdale. No return. They'll take over first down, 10 yards to go. The Wildcats dodged one bullet. Let's see what they can do on defense here. A big defensive play stop what was going to be surely a touchdown or a field goal drive for the Riverdale Warriors. Let's see what Oak Ridge's defense can do. So far, they haven't been able to stop him except on the play down there, and that was really Carney stopping himself. Let's see what the Warriors can do here. First down, 10 yards to go. Five-man front for the Wildcats. 7.41 to play. First quarter of a scoreless ball game. Receivers, two to the left, single man wide to the right. From the eye once again. Carney under center. He drops back to pass. Feeling some pressure. He's in trouble. Running for his life. Turns the ball up the field. He is blasted at the 35-yard line by the Wildcats. It'll be a loss of about four on the play. 
Once again, David, the Wildcat defense, you know, I think after that first drive and after their first offensive series, they, they realize they're here to play. They realize that they're, they're on the same field here, that they can play with Riverdale. They have certainly come, and, and they're fired up and ready. And, and uh, you know, it's, there's been a distinct change in their, their play. After they've made the big play defensively, they've come back here uh, on this series. They had great penetration in the backfield. They had good coverage downfield, and they were able to make the sack. From the 35-yard line of Riverdale, two receivers to the right, a single man wide to the left. From the eye, second down, 13 yards to go. From the 35, once again, Carney will hand it off on the draw. The man gets good yardage across the 40. Rick Kennedy makes the tackle at around the 43-yard line. It'll be third down at about four or about five yards to go for a first. Nice play, Brett Kennedy. Well, it really was. You know, that, that play was set up very well. I, I really thought that that was going to be a, a, a pass play. They came out with a deep draw. Uh, he broke it to the outside. Brett Kennedy made an outstanding open field tackle. Uh, if it weren't not be for that, he'd probably still be running and put, probably have six points on the board. Great tackle, Brett. Third down, five yards to go from the 44 yard line of the Warriors. They need to get just beyond the 49 for a first. Single running back, three receivers here to the left side. Single coverage on the man to the far right. Carney under center, drops back, feeling pressure, gets away from the pressure, picks up a first down across the 50, breaks to the outside. Kenneth Jackson makes a stop at around the 30 yard line. Just an explosive play by their quarterback. He was feeling pressure, got around the end, and picked up great yardage, first and 10 of the Oak Ridge 30. Yeah, I think that may have been a design play on the part of Riverdale, David. They uh, put three receivers here on the near side and got the Oak Ridge defense to shift to that strong side. They had a single receiver to the right, locked up on one cornerback, and they got that cor the receiver to make a good block. The quarterback read that and took off to that side, the, the weak side of the Oak Ridge defense, and he's such a good athlete, he was just able to get to the outside and pick up the first. First and 10 officially at the Oak Ridge 33, single coverage on the left side here for the Wildcats. Oak Ridge with five on the front here. 5.43 to play first quarter of a scoreless ball game. Here's the handoff to the tailback. He trips, tries to get around the corner, and he will not. He'll be buried after a gain of only a yard or two. The Wildcats there for the stop. They just kind of strung it out. And DeAndre Johnson, who got hurt on this field last year, <laughs> slow to get up. Let's see if he's okay. Comes off slightly hobbled, favoring his right ankle. And just like last year, DeAndre Johnson comes up a little bit lame. Well, that's just terrible to see right there, David. DeAndre's limping, and we don't know what the injury is, and certainly we hope it's not serious, but uh, that's just terrible to see because DeAndre is such a great player and such a big part of this team, and it happened last year, like we said, and he's down and on the field. David, why don't we take a, a timeout as the officials have asked for one. We'll be back in 30 seconds. Ah. I am not my face Where is he? Oh. Back here at Middle Tennessee State, it'll be second down, hand off to the full look. There's a big stick by the Wildcats. They hit him hard. Jason Bettingfield at the 31-yard line. It'll be third down facing Riverdale and about eight yards to go. Four minutes, 46 seconds to go. 4.45 to play in the first quarter of a scoreless ball game. That's two big plays in a row that Jason Bettingfield has made, David. He chased the running back from behind on the play before, and of course Oak Ridge did a good job to string that play out. And then right there, he just put his helmet right on the big fullback's belly and drove him back for no gain. From the 31-yard line of the Wildcats, once again, Corey Carney up to the line. Third down, eight yards to go. Eye formation, receivers left and right. He wants to pass. Across the way, pass is complete. Not a first down. It's fourth down at about two. As the pass was complete to Bryant, fourth down, about two, maybe three yards to go for Riverdale. That was a great tackle once again by Brett Kennedy, David, just playing his position fundamentally sound and, and fundamentally perfect. Made a great tackle here on the near sideline, keeping the speedy Fernando Bryant from getting to the outside and picking up the first. However, Riverdale's offense is remaining on the field, and they're going to go for it here on fourth and one. Fourth down, a long yard to go. The Riverdale fans on their feet. They need about a yard and a half to go for a first. Receivers left and right. Carney under center once again from the 25-yard line of the Wildcats. Carney drops back, rolling to his left, picks up the first down as he moves the ball to the 21-yard line. Nice play. That quarterback, he's got a lot of speed, and he picks up the first down. Well, you can really tell as soon as he gets the ball, he knows exactly what to do with it. He's really quick. He's uh, by far the quickest uh, quarterback Oak Ridge has seen. They've probably seen quicker tailbacks and running backs, but this quarterback is extremely quick. 
Three minutes, 33 seconds to play. I, I agree with that. Extremely quick. Up to the line they'll come. First down, 10 yards to go. From the 22-yard line of a scoreless ball game. Ball's at the 22. I formation once again. Receivers left and right. Carney under center for the Riverdale Warriors. And he'll roll to his right. Cut it up the field. This time he's hit after a gain of about three or so on the play. He moves the ball inside the 20. Down to the 17. 3.05 and counting here. It'll be second down and about seven yards to go for a first. I believe it was Jeff Miner in on the stop that time for Oak Ridge. David who did a good job of, of coming down and wrapping up Carney, but it was a good block on the right side on the part of the Riverdale line. I believe it was big David Coppins, who, as I said earlier, has already signed with Vanderbilt. And uh, he did a good job there opening up the hole and uh, enabling Carney to pick up three yards. Second down, seven yards to go. Backfield split for Carney. This time he rolls left. Pitch out to goes to the outside. They move the ball across the 10. Five, touchdown, Riverdale. The Warriors score on a 20, 18-yard run. They got around the corner. Now Brett Kennedy comes up a little hobble. They take the lead, six to nothing, with 2.35 to play in the first quarter of this ball game. Well, once again, David Riverdale's speed and, and quickness and, and the ability to execute comes through as they come here to the near side, running the option. The Wildcats took the quarterback up. He pitched it off to his tailback, who got a good block on the outside and was just able to, to go in with a couple of great moves and, and get the first score of the ball game. Ryan Miller to attempt the extra point. To hold for them will be Ryan Maloney. Low snap. Here's the kick. It's up, and it's up, and it is good. But time on the field, our score, 2.35 to play. We're in the first quarter, 7-0 Riverdale, and we'll be back in 60 seconds. They hit him. Back here at Middle Tennessee State, here's the kick by the Warriors, angling off to the left side, fielded by Oak Ridge. That's Sean Williams, 15, 20. Runs into a man at the 25-yard line, runs right into Fernando Bryant. It'll be Oak Ridge first down, 10 yards to go. Line of scrimmage will be the 25-yard line, 7 to nothing. The Wildcats trailing the Riverdale Warriors here in the first quarter, 2.31 to play. David, I don't know if you noticed or not, but Sean Williams was not lined up deep that time. He was lined up over on the side, obviously, where uh, the Riverdale generally kicks the ball and was crouched down and didn't have his numbers toward the uh, kicking team. So it looked like he was definitely trying to disguise himself some way so they wouldn't um, know where he was and they ended up kicking it right to him. I thought that was a great play. Doug Anderson in as a wide out, drifting off wide to the left side. Tori Yancey wide to the right. William Dickey and Sean Williams behind quarterback Jeff Miner. Sean Williams changing positions behind the quarterback Miner. First and 10. Here's the quarterback dropping back to pass. Pass complete to William Dickey across the 35. Moves the ball first down, 10 yards to go for the Wildcats at the 37-yard line. First, nice play, Oak Ridge. Yeah, it really was, David. It was a great play. Oak Ridge just fakes it to Williams. You know everybody for Riverdale is keying on him. They're going to try to shut him down first and worry about what Oak Ridge does after that second. And the Wildcats faked it to him, got the defense flowing in that direction, then rolled to the other side, and Jeff Miner delivered a nice crisp pass to William Dickey, who ran hard to pick up the first down. A minute 52 to play. We're in the first quarter, seven to nothing, Riverdale on top. Brent Kennedy far wide to the left side, single man wide to the right, Tori Yancey. Backfield split once again, first and 10 at the 37 yard line. Handoff, William Dickey just dives forward, moves the ball close to the 40 yard line, gain of about two on the play. It'll be second down, eight yards to go. A minute 30 to play in the first quarter, seven to nothing to score. They score on an 18 yard run by Alvin Duke, his 36th touchdown of the 1994 season. The ball just shy of the 40. Second down, eight yards to go. A minute 19 to play. Doug Anderson drifts off wide to the left side. Roy Howard lined up on the left as well. Tori Yancey wide to the right. We haven't seen DeAndre come back into the ball game. From backfield split once again, he'll pass. Across the middle, complete. William Dickey at the 45. Picks up a first down, I believe, around the 47-yard line. Might be about a half a yard short, but once again, they hit the fullback out of the backfield. Close to another Oak Ridge first down. Yeah, I think they're going to have to bring the chains out to measure this one, David, but from my vantage point, and I believe Scott's vantage point, I believe, got it. I believe they have it too, and uh, hopefully Oak Ridge certainly does have it here, but once again, the Wildcats go into the air, and you got to like it. William Dickey is so fast, and he can get to the outside and go all the way if he's and got sprints to the line as the senior center. Tori Yancey and Doug Anderson wide to the left side. Roy Howard wide to the right. Backfield split once again. Sean Williams and William Dickey. Here's the sweep to Sean Williams. He breaks to the outside 50. Moves the ball into Riverdale territory. Tackled at the 47-yard line. 27 seconds to play. Broke one tackle. Gained about five in the play. It'll be second down, five yards to go. And uh, I think that might be the next to last play here in the first quarter. Well, once again, David, the Wildcats going with a little bit of different wrinkle. We haven't seen that play very much this year, if at all. Wildcats with a quick toss 
to the left side, and Sean Williams just made a great move right at the line of scrimmage to get to the outside and pick up four or five yards. Final seconds ticking down here. Jeff Miner takes the snap, drops back to pass, looks down the field, has some time, goes down the field to Roy Howard. Here comes the pass. Incomplete. Lots of pushing and shoving. The first quarter has come to a close. We'll be back in 60 seconds. Looks like actually line up a tight end to the left. The Wildcats moving from right to left. Backfield split, third and six. Miner will pass again, having pressure. Here's the pass, incomplete. Big stick on Jeff Miner. Nobody picked him up at all. And Jeff Miner took a big shot. And it'll be fourth down facing the Wildcats. Great play by number 81, Antron Peebles. Yeah, I believe it was Larry Floyd, David, actually, who came in on the blitz that really nailed Jeff Miner. This guy goes 6'1", close to 200 pounds, and he is very, very fast. So he got in there and put a hit on Jeff. Jeff got up from it and is back in the ballgame and, and okay and everything, but it was a big hit. Antron Peebles, as you said, David, also back there on the play. And it'll be Roy Howard to punt. High punt. Angling off to the left side. It's going to be fielded and fumbled, picked up by the the Warriors and then a big stick is made at the 15 yard line Mike Howard down there along with Eric Williams gonna be first down 10 yards to go at the 15 yard line seven to nothing to score 11 46 to play in the first half Wildcats trailed 14 to nothing at the half last year in a driving rain here at Middle Tennessee State the crowd continues to file in the home side is almost completely full and the visitor side Oak Ridge has packed their stands but there's a few seats on the corners of each side this place is almost filled to capacity up to the line will come the Warriors the Wildcats could use a big turnover here first down 10 yards to go Corey Carney under his center from the eye two receivers to the right a single man wide to the left side from the 15 yard line here's the handoff to the fullback Marcus Smith who moves the ball forward for a gain of about three or so yards as Sean Williams is in the defensive secondary for the Wildcats for the first time I believe all season I think you're right, David. I believe he is in there for the first time, perhaps replacing DeAndre Johnson. I'm not sure how they've rotated the positioning, but Sean Williams is certainly capable of playing defense, and you've got to like his heart coming in there, getting in there, wanting to be a part of this ball game. 11 minutes to play in the first half. They have the ball. Second down, seven yards to go. The ball at their own 18-yard line from the eye. Two receivers to the left side. Carney under center. Four-man front for the Wildcats. Actually, five-man front. Carney rolls to his right, turns the ball up the field, and is tackled at the 20-yard line. Gain of only a yard or two. A nice defensive play again by the Wildcats. And it'll be third down and about three and a half yards to go for a first. Yeah, that play was defensed nicely, David, uh, by Oak Ridge. A number of players were right in the correct spots, forcing the quarterback at first to pitch it. Then he realized his pitch man was covered by, I believe, Brett Kennedy. And then he realized he just had to eat it, and the Wildcats were there to make the stop and the tackle for a short gain. Officially, the line of scrimmage, the 21-yard line, third down and four yards to go. Backfield split, two receivers to the left, a single man here to the right. Up to the line will come the Warriors. They need about four for a first. Quarterback in trouble. Here's the pitch. It's a fumble. Picked up and a big stick made. And they are going to punt the ball away. Sean Williams there for the stop. And the Warriors will punt the ball away. It's fourth down and about three yards to go. Yeah, it's great. Sorry about that, Michael. It's great to see Sean Williams coming in and playing defense. You know, we haven't seen him there all year, but you know he's practiced there. Uh, brings an, another interesting thing. It does look like Mike Gibson will be returning punts now that uh, uh, DeAndre Johnson is down with an injury. Nine minutes, 41 seconds and counting. The Wildcats should get good field position out of this. Gerald Griffin to do the honors punting. The Wildcats with Mike Gibson, I believe, standing back at the 45-yard line. Everybody else on the line. Fourth down and about three and a half yards to go. Good snap. Here's the punt. Gets a high sp spiraling kick. The Wildcats field it at the 40. And Mike Gibson can't break the tackle at the 39-yard line. The Wildcats will take over there. First down, 10 yards to go. Great punt. Great coverage. Flags are down the play. You know, the flags were down while the ball was in the air deep in Oak Ridge territory. I don't know what that means. That's a very unusual place to see some penalties. They are talking to the Oak Ridge player, so maybe it's against. I take that back. It's uh, against Oak Ridge. Flags are everywhere. There's one back at the original line of scrimmage, and there's one right at midfield. Maybe we'll have offsetting fouls, hopefully, because if it's against Oak Ridge, then the Riverdale offense is going to stay on the field. And I think that's going to happen. I think it's going to be an eligible uh, illegal participation on the part of the Wildcats as they move the play up to the um, around the 37-yard line. And that's going to give them the first down. That's a big, big mistake for the Wildcats. They say 12 men on the field, and the drive continues. The Wildcats did what they had to do. They stopped them, and now the offense for Riverdale is back out on the field. 
Yeah, that's a big stop for Oak Ridge, David, and just a, a heartbreaking penalty. Just a tough break for the Wildcats out there, and you got to wonder if the injury to DeAndre Johnson didn't cause some sort of confusion in the punt return team of Oak Ridge. Seven to nothing the score. Two receivers to the left, a single man wide to the right. Carney from the 37-yard line. From the I formation, he drops back, hands it off to his fullback, who is tackled at the 42-yard line by the Wildcats, I think John Dickens. And it'll be a gain on the play of about five or six yards. They move the ball to the 43-yard line. We're down to 8.43 to play. We're in the first half. Seven to nothing, the Warriors on top of the Wildcats. Here at Middle Tennessee State, the winner advances to Vanderbilt to play for the state championship. Two receivers to the left, a single man wide to the right. That's Ryan Maloney. Up to the line they'll come. Smith and Duke in the backfield. Carney under center from his own 43. Second down, four. And he hands it off again to Smith. And Smith is tackled at the 45-yard line. Shy of a first down by about a yard. It'll be third down and a yard to go. Kenneth Jackson there for the stop for Oak Ridge. I don't envy anybody that's got to tackle that guy in the open field, David. Uh, Kenneth Jackson that time did about as good as you can do. Wrapped him up and dropped him pretty much right on the spot, right where they made contact. As I said earlier, Marcus Smith, 5'11", weighs 240 pounds. And when you get that big load moving up the field, uh, going directly north and south, he's tough to bring down. But Oak Ridge has done a pretty good job of that so far. Third down and about a yard to go. Up to the line will come the Warriors. Two receivers to the left. Carney under center. They need about a yard for a first. And here's the handoff. Here's the run. And he dives forward for the first down. Nice run by Alvin Duke. First down, 10 yards to go. Line of scrimmage will be at the Riverdale 48-yard line. 7.37 to play in the first half. They lead it 7 to nothing. They have the ball just shy of midfield. The ball at the 48-yard line. They just have some outstanding quickness. And their quarterback, I think he is so scary. Their running backs don't scare me as much as the quarterback does. Because when he has the ball, he's made things happen, at least in this ball game. First down, 10 yards to go. Two receivers to the left, a single man wide to the right. From the eye, once again, Smith and Duke behind Carney. And he'll pitch this time to his tailback. The Wildcats spread it out, but he finds a hole. Moves the ball for great yardage. He moves the crawl into Oak Ridge territory all the way down to the 41-yard line before he's finally stopped by the Wildcats. The flag down on the play. Of course, we're hoping this one's going to be against Riverdale. We'll have to wait and see what the call is. Indeed, it's going to go against the Warriors. It'll be a holding call against Riverdale. So the first penalty of the ball game. They weren't penalized at all last week in their game that they won 40 to nothing over the Science Hill Hilltoppers. That was a fine run, though, a scary run. They have such outstanding talent. 7:08 to play. Packed house here at Middle Tennessee State. I was looking across the field there. You all have the binoculars. Do you see DeAndre Johnson over there at all? Well, David, I, I saw something earlier that I thought was good news, and that was Coach Younger appeared to be taping him, and I can't really tell over the, the players because we are on the opposing sideline, but basically my thoughts were if Dr. McMahon was looking at him, it may be something more serious like a, a knee or something, but it was Coach Younger that looked to be taping him, and hopefully we can take that as something to be optimistic about. First and 17 for the Riverdale Warriors. They'll pass. Here's a little screen pass. Look out in the complete, third row. And almost caught by uh, Brad Redman on the Oak Ridge sideline across the way. We've got Brad's name in the ball game here. 6.47 to play in the first half. 7 to nothing to score. It'll be second down and 17 yards to go. 17 doesn't seem like a lot of yards for these guys, though. Well, they're certainly capable of going all the way at any given time, David. They've got such tremendous speed, and, you know, they, they're just very, very fast, and obviously the fastest team we've seen to this point. Two receivers. Actually, they'll put three receivers out there again. They picked up a first down on a big play before. Single running back, single man wide to the right. The Wildcats, second down, 17 for Riverdale. Quarterback Carney drops back, now will run. He's hit and dropped right at the line of scrimmage. No place to go this time. And the Wildcats stuff him right at the line of scrimmage. And Josh Young there for the stop for the Wildcats. Well, they came back that time with a play that uh, they picked up a big first down early. They had trips on the left side and one uh, receiver on the right side with single coverage. The quarterback had a, took about five steps, showed the ball like he was going to throw and tucked it up the field. It's called a quarterback draw. That time, uh, it looks like Josh Young came in and got a hand on him. And by that time, uh, there's three or four other Wildcat players in on him. 6-14 and counting here in the first half. 7 to nothing. Riverdale on top. Third down. 17 yards to go. They need to get to the 42-yard line of the Wildcats. From the eye, they'll come. Here's the quarterback dropping straight back to pass. Across the middle, pass complete for a first down. Across the 40. Tackled it around the 37-yard line. A great play. A great pass. First down, 10 yards to go for the Warriors. They needed 17. They got about 19 on the play. Well, David, this team, this Riverdale team just looks like 
uh, you know, a college team, really. I mean, that was just a great play right there. They went with a little fake draw play, a play action pass. They had a number of guys out in the pattern, and Carney had a lot of time to throw, and he's got a good, strong arm. Just delivered the ball right on the money to Gerald Griffin, who was able to spin out of a tackle and pick up the first down. Single man wide to the left side, a single man wide to the right. First down, 10. Seven to nothing, the Riverdale Warriors on top. First and 10 from the Oak Ridge. 38-yard line. Once again, the quarterback Amen. drops back, and a flag goes down on the play, and I think they'll be penalized five. Yeah, I believe the tight end on the left side moved that time, David. And it'll be, let's see, a five-yard step off against the Warriors. Uh, as I minute, said a minute ago, they had it uh, third and 17, and they still picked up the first down. They're going to penalize the five yards. It'll be second down, 15 yards to go. 5.32 to play, 7 to nothing to score. The Wildcats saw the Warriors score on an 18-yard run by Alvin Duke. A nine-play, 61-yard drive, seven to nothing to score the Warriors on top. Moving from left to right, first down, 15 yards to go. Up to the line once again, Corey Carney, the quarterback, Marcus Smith, the fullback, Alvin Duke, the tailback. Carney from the 43, drops back, hands it off to Duke. Duke across the 40, moves the ball forward, close to first down yardage as he moves the ball to the 32-yard line. He just has great body lane, lean the ball forward, picks up good yardage. It'll be second down and about four yards to go for a first, more like five yards for a first down. Well, he's a lot like Sean Williams, David. He's built low to the ground. He's so fast, and once he finds the hole, he just lowers his shoulder and hits it and reaches maximum speed so fast, and then at that point, he's just really tough to bring down. He's able to run through arm tackles and pick up good yardage on just about every, every opportunity he get, has in which he has open field. Second down, five yards to go from the 33. Carney will pitch this time to Duke. Duke tries to attack the line, moves the ball across the 30, picks up a first down at around the 28-yard line. Clock ticking on down here, 4.29 to play in the first half. Seven to nothing they lead. First down, 10 yards to go for the Riverdale Warriors. Line of scrimmage will be at the 27-yard line. And we talked about this in the pregame. One thing that they do, they keep the opposing team's defense on the field for a long period of time, wearing them down. Our defense has been out there quite a bit tonight. Yeah, they have, David, and, uh, you know, I guess that's Riverdale's strength is defensively making it three plays and out, giving the ball in the hands of their offense, and then offensively keeping the ball for a long time, wearing out the opposing team's defense. First and ten, Marcus Boom. Smith stuffed to the line of scrimmage. Josh Young there for the stop. John Dickens, Eric Clemens, Mike Howard also around the stop. This time he might have even lost a yard. We'll call it second down and about ten yards to go. Under four minutes to play. The ball resting at the 27-yard line of the Wildcats. They lead it seven to nothing clock ticking down 351 and counting they'll send let's see Bryant wide to the left side a single man wide to the right Gerald Griffin from the eye once again they'll come second down about 10 yards to go for a first Corey Carney their senior quarterback under center drops back he's in trouble across the way pass is deflected and caught and they'll not even score on it Oh, what a play. They moved the ball to the one-yard line. The Wildcats had great defense. The ball was deflected up, and the outstanding receiver, Peebles, pulled it down and moved the ball inside the one-yard line. First down, goal to go for the Warriors. That's just a huge play for Riverdale right there, David, and Antron Peebles made the play, and you know, I guess that's why Alabama and Tennessee and Notre Dame are after the guy. He's just a great player. He's such a big, strong guy, 6'4", 225, and was able to just uh, find the ball after the deflection to make the catch. Here comes the quarterback handing it off to Duke, and he dives, and he scores. Alvin Duke scores the touchdown, and they lead it by a score of 13 to nothing with 3 minutes, 13 seconds to play in the first half. The Wildcats appeared to have the great defensive play, but the great athletes make the big plays, and that's exactly what Riverdale did. And they lead it by a score of 13 to nothing. The score last year was 14 to nothing at the half. The Wildcats appeared to have great defense on it. Just a great individual effort by the Warriors, and they'll go for the extra point. 13 to nothing our score. The winner heads to Vanderbilt in a state championship matchup with either Germantown or as the kick is up, and the kick is up, and it is good. But time on the field our score. I, I, it may have been. It? Yeah. yeah. Oh, was Brett? Brett? None plays in half. Defense doesn't look bad. Back here at Middle Tennessee State University, Sean Bohannon back to receive the kick. Sean Williams on the right side along with Mike Gibson. Wildcats anticipating a little pooch kick like they do. Here is a kick. Hits it long. Sean Bohannon will field it. He's at the 10. He's at the 15, 20. 
25, 30, to the 35-yard line, to the 37. Great return by the sophomore. Sean Bohannon returns it first and 10 Wildcats. You always sort of hold your breath, David, when you see a sophomore back there like that in a big game, but Sean Bohannon and Mike Gibson and Bill Brock and every sophomore, John Dickens and, and Josh Young, everyone that's gotten an opportunity in this ballgame has really come up big, and no exception there. Sean Bohannon made a great, great run on the kickoff uh, reception that time. Great, great uh, kickoff return. Excuse me, David. Here comes the Oak Ridge offense once again at the 37, 258 and counting, 14 to nothing, Riverdale on top. The ball's at the Oak Ridge 37. Doug Anderson limps off wide to the right side along with Tori Yancey. Roy Howard split off to the left side from the I Oak Ridge. First down 10, Jeff Miner facing a four-man front. And he'll pass. Screen pass complete to Tori Yancey. Gets a block from Anderson. Turns the corner 45. Down he goes to the 45. Pretty good gain on first down. Nice little screen pass complete. Anderson with a big block. Exactly, David. And, you know, I guess that's probably his forte on this team is to be a great, great blocker. And it's exactly what he did. Oak Ridge lined up two receivers to the right side. They dropped Tory Yancey back to catch the pass and sent Doug Anderson downfield to block. And that's exactly what he did. Freed Tory Yancey up for a nice seven-yard gain. Keith Thrift and Tory Yancey wide to the left. Roy Howard wide to the right. Backfield split. Second down and about three yards to go. 2.07 to play. Here's the pitch. Nice pitch to Sean Williams. Turns the corner. Needs to get outside. Does not. Exactly close to a first down, though, at around the 47-yard line. It's hard to run east and west, David, against this Riverdale team because they string everything out so well. But I think Sean did a good enough job on that particular run to pick up a first down. Gain of about two and a half or three on the play. Indeed it is. First down. Gain of three for Sean Williams. One minute, 50 seconds to play here. First down, 10 yards to go. The line of scrimmage will be at the 47-yard line. Doug Anderson brings in the play from the sideline, 145 and counting. The ball at the Oak Ridge, 47. Anderson and Yancey wide to the right. Here's Big Roy wide, wide to the left side. Backfield split this time. First and 10, Oak Ridge. A minute and a half to play first half. Minor will pass to Roy Howard. Here's the pass, incomplete. Overthrown. I think Roy somehow got bottled up at the line of scrimmage and didn't get down the field quickly enough. Pass overthrown. Defending for them was Alvin Duke. 131 to play. Stops the clock. Second down, 10 yards to go. The ball at the 47 and a half yard line of the Wildcats. Yeah, the good thing about that, at least, David, it stops the clock. You know, Oak Ridge has got a uh, minute and 31 seconds left to go in their two-minute offense. The ball is almost to midfield on their own 48-yard line. So there's plenty of time. I think it's imperative that Oak Ridge comes in and at least get three points out of this. Howard wide to the left side. Two receivers to the right. Backfield split once again, second and ten. Here's the pass. Nice pass. Nice catch. And he fumbles it. The ball's on the ground, and I think Riverdale has recovered it. The sophomore, Keith Thrip, made the reception and fumbled it after he picked up a first down in Riverdale territory with a minute 25 to play and a big stick on Keith Thrift, the junior Keith Thrift. Yeah, it was a big stick, David, and a nice crisp pass by Jeff Miner. You know, the positive things about that play, the Wildcats had the open pass, they had the reception by Keith Thrift, and I guess you just have to give credit to Riverdale, who came in there hard with their helmet to pop that ball free, and they were there. And uh, I guess, you know, luck is preparation. Uh, was, you know, they were just able to come up with a play. Tough break for Oak Ridge. First down, 10 yards to go. Carney will hand it off, and here's a big hole again. Moves the ball to midfield before Mike Coward makes the stop. Gain of about nine or so on the play. Under a minute to play. 14 to nothing, Riverdale on top of the Wildcats. You know, Oak Ridge has had two, three big tough breaks already happened to him in this ball game. We talked about one of the keys Oak Ridge would have to get some breaks. The breaks have gone Riverdale's way to this point. The Wildcats did thwart one scoring drive with a bad pitch. They're at the 50-yard line, second and a yard to go, 39 seconds to play. Carney under center, drops back, screen pass complete. Out here to the right side. He breaks the tackle and moves down the sideline for his hit hard at the 30. He breaks another tackle, moves the ball down to the 25. Stays in bound with 26 seconds to play. I think the Riverdale Warriors want a timeout. They've moved the ball all the way down to the 26. It's officially the 25, and Riverdale calls a timeout with 26 seconds to go. And the Wildcats had to come up with another big play here. We'll take a quick break. 14 to nothing, Riverdale. We'll be back in 30 seconds. Thrill. Back here at Middle Tennessee State University, the Wildcats trailing 14 to nothing. And I tell you, the Wildcats have had, as I mentioned a moment ago, three big plays go against them 
The, the drop pass by Roy Howard, which could have kept the drive along live. A great pass, a, gr a nice catch by Keith Thrift just a moment ago, but he was hit hard and fumbles the ball. And that defensive play down on the other end of the field where the ball was tipped around, and somehow they caught it and moved the ball inside the five. Okay, so David, you also have to throw in that the big penalty that Oak Ridge had for illegal participation. From the 25-yard line, backfield split, 26 seconds to go in the first half. They already lead 14 to nothing. The Wildcats really can't afford to allow anything else. Carney rolling to his right, turns it upfield, tackled at around the 18-yard line. Gain of about five on the play. We're down to 19 seconds, and they're going to call another timeout. Let's take one ourselves. We'll be back in 60 seconds. The Warriors going for a field goal. Here's the kick. It's no good. And they went for it with 15 seconds to go, and the Wildcats will get the ball back, but they thwart the scoring drive. They go for a field goal with 19 seconds to go. It was only like second down and about four yards to go. I'm kind of surprised. I thought they had at least one more play in them. That's a little conservative in my book. Maybe they're 14 to nothing. They think it's already over, but that's, to me, very conservative. I would have taken a chance here. It's extremely, extremely hard to second-guess Gary Rankin. David, he's uh, taking his team to the clinic bowl last year and is putting his, his team in a chance to go back again this year. But right there, that's just kind of a tough call. Second down with 19 seconds left to go for a long, long field goal. You know, you could have done a, at least one or two more plays to get yourself closer. But uh, it's a great break for Oak Ridge and a great opportunity to maybe try to get something going here as Oak Ridge is actually going to down it. And I would assume that that would be the end of the first half. And you're exactly right, Michael Langenberg, as the Oak Ridge Wildcats head to the locker room. The exact identical score. Ball's on the tee. The second half about to get underway here from Middle Tennessee State. Capacity crowd. A beautiful night for football here in the semifinal round ball game. Only four teams in Class 5A are playing tonight. And here's the kick of the second half. He hits it high, angling it off to the right side. Bohannon fields it at the 15, 20, 25, to the 30, to the 33-yard line. And that's where Oak Ridge will take over. First down, 10 yards to go. Sean Bohannon, two consecutive kickoff returns for the Wildcats. And onto the field will come the Oak Ridge offense, trying to get things going. And here comes the senior quarterback, Jeff Miner. The fullback is William Dickey. They had some success in the early point of the ball game on the little pass play from Miner to the fullback. Let's see if they go back to that. It worked effectively in the first half. They try to spread things out with Tori Yancey and Doug Anderson drifting off wide to the left side. Oak Ridge from the eye. First and ten from the 33. Here's the screen pass complete to Tori Yancey. Breaks one tackle. Can't break two. Gains hardly any yardage on the play. Gets up to around the 34-yard line. They snuffed that one out pretty well and Torrey actually, actually lucky that he got any yardage out of the play. Well, it looked like number two. I believe that's the um, number, what's number two? Well, Gerald Griffin. Yeah, Gerald Griffin came up and almost intercepted that ball, but it's a good thing he did because he was clear selling to the end zone if he would have. Up to the line, Oak Ridge, second down, nine yards to go, 11-13 to play third quarter. Minor handoff, Sean Williams finds a hole, a big one, across the 40, moves the ball forward for a first down at the 44-yard line, the third or fourth first down of the ball game. Nice run by Sean Williams, first and 10 Wildcats at the 44-yard line, and the Wildcats move the chains and have it first and 10. 11.06 to play, the Wildcats down 14 to nothing in this semifinal round playoff ball game from Middle Tennessee State University. Here come the Wildcats to the line, moving from right to left, wearing their white jerseys, silver pants with red numerals. Up to the line, backfield split, receivers left and right. Miner from the 44 will hand it off again to Sean Williams. Once again, he falls forward for a gain of only a yard, moving the ball to the Oak Ridge 45-yard line. That'll be second down and nine yards to go. 10, 38 and counting here in the third quarter. 14 to nothing, Riverdale on top of Oak Ridge. Mark Hayes, our statistician. Jeff Wise, our engineer back at the station. Mike Gibson brings in the play from the sideline. He drifts off wide to the right along with Tori Yancey. Oak Ridge with William Dickey at fullback. Roy Howard lined up here on the left side, tied in for the Wildcats. Second down nine. And Roy will pitch to Sean Williams. He's hit, falls forward for only a gain of a yard. Great penetration that time by number eight, I believe, Larry Floyd. Perhaps, and it'll be, let's see, second down, third down, and about eight yards to go. Ten minutes to play. We're in the third quarter. 14 nothing to score. Well, David, uh, Riverdale, I believe, is blitz, blitzing their linebackers pretty heavily, trying to shut down that sweep, and that play they guessed right. 
It was a good blitz and a good tackle on the part of the Riverdale Warriors. Up to the line, Oak Ridge. Here's a big third down play. They need to get to the Riverdale 40. Four yard, actually the 46 yard line. Jeff Miner will pass. Going to his right. Needs to run. Might turns it upfield. He's hit and dropped to the line of scrimmage. Driven down hard by the Riverdale Warriors. And this coach to my left, extremely adamant about it. Jeff looked down the field, had Brian Landry out there blocking for him. Decided to run, then had no place to go, and he was dropped by Peebles, and they stuffed the Wildcats, and it's fourth down and about eight yards to go. And Roy Howard will punt the ball away. 9.15 to play here in the third quarter. The Wildcats move the ball to the 44, but that's as far as they get. Here's the snap. Here's the punt by Roy Howard. Gets a good one. Oh, what a spiral. That's going to bounce to the five, and it'll be going into the end zone. That'll be a touchback. Roy got into it that time. First and 10 at the 20-yard line for the Riverdale Warriors. And let's see what the Oak Ridge defense can do here. Trailing 14 to nothing. 8.57 to play third quarter. Roy looked like he was limping a little bit, David, heading to the sideline. Let's certainly hope he's uh, going to be okay. I still haven't spotted DeAndre with the binoculars. Certainly hope that, you know, he's going to be able to play here in the second half, although we haven't seen him yet, and that's a pretty good indication that he may not be back. Up to the line will come the Warriors. The quarterback is Corey Carney. They lead 14 to nothing. Oak Ridge Band trying to get the fans and team excited here. From the eye, two receivers left and right. Here's the handoff to the fullback. Big hole, 25 to the 27-yard line. Close to a first down. Just a big hole opened up on the right side, and he cut it to the outside. Nice run, Marcus Smith. Indeed it was, David, and Riverdale's just so fundamentally sound. I mean, they come out here in the second half. Oak Ridge needs to get something going big. Riverdale's ahead 14 to nothing. You may, uh, it's a good opportunity, you'd think, for the team that's in the lead here, Riverdale, to, for maybe a letdown, but, you know, they just don't appear to be doing that to this point. Second down, two yards to go from the eye. Receivers left and right once again from the 28. Hand off this time to Smith. Picks up the first down as he moves the ball to the 35-yard line before he's tripped up by Brett Kennedy and John Dickens. First down, 10 yards to go for the Warriors. The ball at their own 30, let's see, 34-yard line, 8-19 to play. We're in the third quarter. The winner advances to play. The winner of the Germantown Jackson Central Mary game this Saturday, at their, uh, next Saturday, at Vanderbilt for the state championship. Wide to the left side will go Brian, a single man wide to the right. That'll be Griffin. Up to the line they'll come. Backfield split. First and 10 for Carney. At the 34-yard line of the Warriors, the Wildcats could use a big play. They'll hand it off to the tailback, who's hit at the line of scrimmage, and is dropped. Good defensive play that time. Jeff Miner, John Dickens, along with, let's see, Mike Howard, and um, let's see, the Wildcats give him about a yard. It'll be second down, nine yards to go. 7.42 and counting. And it'll be, let's see, the Warriors up to the line. Second down and nine. 14 to nothing, Riverdale on top. Excuse me, David, that was a nice play by the Oak Ridge defense. And I think that's going to be a big key for them is to keep Riverdale from picking up any significant yardage on first down. From the eye, they'll come. Second down, nine. From the 34-yard line, and Carney will pass. Feeling some pressure, goes down the field, a wide open man. The pass is going to be incomplete. Mike Gibson came back and recovered. Boy, he was wide open. Fortunately for the Wildcats, the pass was well underthrown. Yeah, if Carney's a little bit stronger with that throw, David, then it's 20 to nothing, and we're waiting for the extra point to see if it's 21 to nothing because uh, Fernando Bryant, certainly the, the speed burner, had certainly gotten past his man, but Mike Gibson made a nice adjustment, and had he not tripped a little bit, he may have picked that one off, but he was able to at least get him back into position to knock it away and prevent the completion. Also a nice job to knock it down to the turf instead of tipping it up to where it may be able to, to be caught by Riverdale. Third down, nine yards to go. The line of scrimmage, the 34-yard line. Big defensive play for the Wildcats. Carney under center. Third down, nine yards to go. Wildcats on defense. Carney hands it off to his fullback. He'll not get the first down. In fact, he'll only get about four. It'll be fourth down and about five yards to go. The Wildcats stop them on this series. And the Wildcats will, let's see, send Mike Gibson, sophomore, back to receive the punt. Second punt of the ball game for the Warriors. Wildcats trail 14 to nothing. The clock is ticking down here. 6.55 to play in the third quarter. A very fast moving ball game here because Riverdale has kept the ball on the ground and have turned out the time off the clock. They'll be punting. Once again into the game will come Gerald Griffin. Boy, a great, a bad snap here would be nice. It's perfect right in his hands. Here's the kick, end over end kick. It's going to bounce and take a good Riverdale bounce. Nobody for the Wildcats wants to even get close to it. It takes a great bounce inside the 20-yard line around the 19 and a half. And that's where Oak Ridge will take over first down 10 yards to go. It's been a 
a game of field position. 6.28 to play, and the Wildcat offense on the field once again. Yeah, I think it's imperative that Oak Ridge gets something going here. You know, it's six minutes and 28 seconds left to go in the third quarter, down by 14 points. Uh, I really think they need to get some kind of points on the board. Uh, of course, a touchdown would be great. They need to come down, and, and I think they know they can move the ball against this team. So I, I really think they need to get some points up on the board, and this big, a, a, really a super time to do it. Here come the Wildcats to the line. Tori Yancey wide to the left side. The Wildcats come up with a full house backfield. Eric Williams is a slot to the left. Oak Ridge from the eye. First down, 10 yards to go. And here's the handoff to Eric Williams. Gets a block from Chambers. He's across. He's gone. Score! Here goes Eric Williams. 50, 45, 40, 35, 30. Down he goes. He didn't score, but he picks up a great game. Eric Williams across the 20, all the way down to the 15-yard line. What an outstanding call for the Wildcats, David. Once again, they get Eric Williams in the ball game. Riverdale sneaks everybody up in the box. They try to, they feel like Oak Ridge is almost definitely going to run it. They do. The Wildcats blow him off the ball. Eric Williams finds a crease and he uses his great speed and we certainly thought he was gone that's a tribute to the great Riverdale speed but Eric Williams got to the outside huge gain Oak Ridge that was a huge play that they needed well that's a good thing you know it's the way you con you uh, counteract a great flowing defense use some counteractions that time they fake with Williams up in the middle came back with Eric Williams for the big gain great play Oak Ridge it really got them back into this game here come the Wildcats to the line, the same formation, first down and 10. Here's the handoff to Dickey, and he is buried after a gain of about three or four yards. That electrifies the Oak Ridge crowd and kind of silences this Riverdale crowd. The Wildcats have the ball at the 13-yard line, 5.43 to play. The Warriors have yet to be scored on in the playoffs. They've shut out everybody. In fact, the last four ball games, they've posted shutouts. Oak Ridge at the 13-yard line. Second down and about seven yards to go. 5.30 to play, third quarter. Torrey Yancey, wide to the right side. Oak Ridge once again with that slot man, Eric Williams. From the eye, here comes Jeff Miner. Second down, seven yards to go. And here's the handoff to Sean Williams. He's across the 10. He moves the ball down to the eight yard line. It'll be third down. Eric Williams carrying the ball. It'll be third down and about three yards to go for a first. 5.06 to play. It'll be third down at about three yards to go. And if you believe it, David, Eric Williams looks like he may be a little bit shaken up on the play. The Wildcats really been hampered by injuries. He's staying in the ball game, but you really have to like the way that uh, Eric Williams runs the football. He finds a crease, he turns on the speed and blows everybody away, then comes back on the next play where the going is tough, lowers his shoulder and runs over people. And listen to this Riverdale crowd here. Doug Anderson wide to the right, Roy Howard here to the left. Full house backfield, third down, they need about three. Jeff Miner, handoff, this time to Sean Williams, he falls to the five. I think it's close to a first down. The Oak Ridge fans, I think Oak Ridge will go for it first anyway. Down. They're going to bring the chains onto the field. It's close to a first down. Might be, well, it's so close, I can't even call it. They're going to bring David, the chains onto the field. I believe they've got it, David. It looks like a good spot. I, I think it's going to be a first down. And if that's the case, it'll be first and goal to five. And here come the guys in black and white trotting across the field the best they can do for 50-year-old men with pot bellies. Up to the line, they'll bring the chains. They'll stretch the chains. And it is, what is it? It'll be short. First down! Goal to go for the Wildcats. Stereo Phonics here in Middle Tennessee State University. Boy, I've never seen the referee had to get down and like he had his binoculars or his, his magnifying glass out to see. It was that close. It must have been just maybe about a half an inch or an inch or so. First down Oak Ridge on the five yard line. The Wildcats cannot afford to turn the ball over here. We're down to 419 to play, 14 to nothing to score. Everybody on their feet. First down, goal to go. Full house backfield for the Wildcats. Jeff Miner rolls to his left, looks in trouble. He's in trouble, but he's got to score! Touchdown, Oak Ridge! Four minutes, five seconds to play in the third quarter. 14 to six to score. Huge play for Jeff Miner. David, he rolled to his right. They blasted the, the intended receiver that time and kept him from getting out on his route. He didn't have anything in front of him. He had a man in his face, but he just underneath, uh, made a good move to get underneath him and then tucked it up, picked up six points. And the Wildcats, Granger Marler into the extra point. It'll be Lamuna to hold, 14 to six to score. Here's the hold, the kick is up by Granger Marler. It's up and it is good, but time on the field, our score. 4.05 to play in the third quarter, 14 to seven Oak Ridge, and we'll be back in 60 seconds. Back here at Middle Tennessee State, 14 to seven, the Oak Ridge Wildcats trail the Riverdale Warriors. Eduardo Rivera to kick off. Great 
drive for the Wildcats, capped off by the touchdown run by Jeff Miner, but it was Eric Williams' drive. Here's the little pooch kick. Fair catch signal four and made at around the 27-yard line, and that's where Riverdale will take over. First down, 10 yards to go, and Joe Gaddis is down on the play. His mother told me last week that at the end of the season, he'll be doing having surgery on that shoulder, and he's slow to get out. The first man out there is Coach Joe Gaddis. He's down. Let's take a quick break. Let's see if G State University 14 to 7 Riverdale on top of the Wildcats. Here come the Warriors to the line. First down, 10 yards to go from the 27 yard line. Quarterback Carney pitches to Duke. He tries to turn the corner. He's oh. blasted hard at the 31 yard line. And look at Coach Joe Gaddis across the way. He is extremely fired up. Indeed he is, David. But once again, you know, I'm not belittling the play of the Wildcats right there. That was an outstanding tackle, but it seemed like Duke falls ahead for a couple extra yards, or maybe he just got an extra good spot. I don't know, but once again, a good play by Oak Ridge, though, to keep that guy from getting any uh, more than he got, a gain of about three. From the 31-yard line, second down, about six yards to go. 3.35 to play, third quarter, 14-7 to seven to score. Backfield split. Corey Carney under center. Drops back to pass. Hands it off to his tailback. He tries to get outside. No place to go, but he breaks the tackle. Down the field he goes. He's across the 50. Tackled it around the 44-yard line. What a great run by that tailback. He was blasted right at the line of scrimmage. Broke three and picks up great yardage. Oh, it was a really great play by Jeff Miner that time. for the, the uh, He had two people, two actually two linemen coming out that pulled on him. Looked like a guard and a tackle. And he took both of them on and still got a piece out. Alvin Duke, unfortunately, wasn't able to wrap up as was uh, not the case for two, uh, two or three other players. Duke makes a great play, gains about 35 yards. Moves the ball down to the Oak Ridge 42-yard line, 319 to play, 14-7 to seven the score. And a timeout is asked for, let's see, by the Wildcats. Let's take one ourselves, 14-7 the score. We'll be back in 60 seconds. Back here at Middle Tennessee State, 14-7. Riverdale on top of the Wildcats. Play is halted for whatever reason as the uh, officials are <laughs> looking down onto the field. They have it first down, 10 yards to go, and the Wildcats, did they call another timeout? Is that their second timeout? The referee talking about it. Maybe they just wanted some indication. The referee over, and now we're going to start. First down, 10 yards to go. Up to the line they'll come. 3.19 to play in the third quarter. Corey Carney at quarterback from the Oak Ridge 43. From the eye, receivers left and right. He drops back the pass. The pass is incomplete. In and out of the fingertips of the intended receiver, Bryant. It'll be second down, 10 yards to go. I think that pass probably should have been caught, David, but given assist on the incompletion to Eric Clemens, who got a hand on the ball and deflected it just enough to change the trajectory. It still went through the fingertips of the intended receiver, but Eric Clemens uh, got a hand on it and at least changed it up a little bit. From the 42-yard line, second down at 10, 3.15 to play, third quarter, 14-7, Riverdale on top. The Wildcats, with everybody just about stacked up on the line, trying to stop the run from the eye. Here's the handoff to the fullback, and they move the ball across the 40, down to the 38-yard line, gain of about three. It'll be third down and seven yards to go, and this might be the biggest play of the ball game coming up defensively. It is a huge play. Uh, you know, the, the good thing about the incompleted pass, it brings up a second and 10, then on, on a short uh, three-yard gain, it brings up a big third down and seven. Uh, this is exactly what the kind of play the Oak Ridge needs this whole entire game, and now they finally got them one. Up to the line of scrimmage will come the Warriors once again. They'll send a single man to the left side, Gerald Griffin. Single man wide to the right. That's Bryant once again. Backfield split. Third down, seven yards to go. From the 39-yard line of the Wildcats, Corey Carney rolling to his right, turns it up the field. Here's the pitch. Here's the tackle. Did he get the first down? No siree. He'll be short by about two yards or so. It'll be fourth down and two yards to go. They played conservative throughout the ball game. This very, very close to four down territory that they appear to be going for it here and this is a big play and if I were them really I think I'd punt the ball away the ball's at the 34 yard line coach Rankin wants to talk about it and they'll call a timeout 14 to 7 our score 209 to play third quarter and we'll be back yeah going for it on fourth down it would appear Wildcats having a little equipment problem here they need about two this is a great defensive need for the Wildcats here they need to stop them John Dickens calls for the Oak Ridge fans they need about two yards. Fourth down and two. Don't Corey Carney outside. under center. He's the quarterback for Riverdale. Two receivers to the left. Under center he goes. They need to stop him. 
He'll roll to his right. He'll pitch to the tailback who's hit. And he oh, falls oh, on the oh, And the Wildcats, I think, have it. I think the Wildcats get will take the over. Do they get the ball? Yes. It'll be Oak Ridge, first down, 10 yards to go. 2.03 to play in the third quarter. Oak Ridge has the ball, and another mistake by the Riverdale Warriors, and the Wildcats will take over, first down, 10 yards to go. Well, probably should have punted it. <laughs> well, probably so, David. Uh, I'd like to make it out of here alive, but uh, uh, once again, an outstanding tackle by uh, the uh, Oak Ridge Wildcats, who came in hard with their fists, their helmets, their headgears, and everything else, and knocked that ball free, and they were all over it. To recover. Here comes the full house backfield once again. First and 10 Wildcats. 14 to 7 to score. A minute 52 to play. Here's the handoff to Eric Williams. He tries to get to the outside. This time he will not. He goes down after about a yard gain. And listen to the Riverdale crowd as they come to their feet. Be a gain of a yard. Second down. Nine yards to go. A minute 38 to play. Third quarter. Well, Michael had mentioned earlier about stringing that the, this defense does such a great job with their great speed of stringing the outside gangers. Uh, they do an outstanding job, but very quick from tackle to tackle, from their secondary linebackers, they're all extremely quick. It's very hard to run east and west against this football team. Up to the line of scrimmage, we'll get the Wildcats the ball at their own 30. A minute 15 to play, 14 to 7. Riverdale on top of Oak Ridge. Tori Yancey and Doug Anderson wide to the left side. Roy Howard to the right. Backfield split. Second down, nine yards to go, and Jeff Miner will pass. Pumps once, setting up the screen, now running for his life. Looks down the field, nobody's open. He comes across the field, pass is incomplete. I don't know who he was throwing it to. It might have been Roy, and that time Jeff probably could have tucked it up the field and run and perhaps picked up the first down. Did not. It'll be third down, nine yards to go. We're down to 56 seconds to play in the third quarter, and that's an interesting play there. I think Jeff probably sh should have tucked the ball under, but of course, he of course sees things that we can't see from the press box here. Backfield split, two receivers to the left. Wildcats with a single man wide to the right. Third down and nine. Jeff Miner will pass, has pressure across the way. Here's Roy, first down at the 45 yard line, and the chains will move again. 49 seconds to play, first and 10 Wildcats. Great play, great pass. Uh, Jeff Miner did a great job. Had the pocket and started collapsing around him a little bit. St stayed calm, stayed cool. Delivered a strike to his big play receiver, Roy Howard, for a 16-yard pickup. First down, keeps the chains going. 45 seconds left to go in the third quarter. Jeff Miner, David, 14-0 as the starter, and he's come to play in this ball game. Zip that one right across the middle on the numbers. Backfield split Oak Ridge from the 45-yard line, 33 seconds to play. Miner, the pitch to Sean Williams, makes a cut inside. He goes to the 50-yard line, gains about four, 25 seconds and counting in the third quarter. Riverdale on top by a score of 14-7. to seven. It'll be second down, seven yards to go. Line of scrimmage at the 49-yard line. The Wildcats watching the time tick down. We're down to 12 seconds to go. The Wildcats quickly to the line. Eight seconds, seven seconds. Will they get the play off with five seconds? Up to the line they'll come. Minor in no hurry. That'll be the final play of the third quarter. We go to the fourth quarter. The Wildcats trailing at 14 to seven and we'll be back. Second down, seven yards to go. Jeff Minor hands it off to Sean Williams. He's across the 50, down to the 48 yard line. Third down and five, tripped up at the line of scrimmage. The ball in Riverdale territory. 11.52 to play, and one of these two teams will be headed to the Clinic Bowl next Saturday. Riverdale on top, 14-7. We're down to 11.43 to play. The Wildcats, another big third down play. Third down, five yards to go. This is where they've come up big all year long, David. Uh, they had a big, huge third down completion just a moment ago to Roy Howard. We'll see what the Wildcats can do here. Full house backfield, William Dickey, Sean Williams, Eric Williams, Jeff Miner from the Riverdale 49, and he'll hand it off to, let's see, it's Jeff Miner, he'll pass. Pass is intercepted, he never should have thrown it. And they're gonna score! Touchdown, Riverdale! Calm down. 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 Yes! They're gonna Calm say down. something, is he, is he sacked? Is that what they're saying? They're calling him down. Big they called him down. They're gonna call Jeff Miner down. The Wildcats catch a huge break right there. Boy, that's a tough call to go against Riverdale because he picked that pass off and was gone for 50 yards. The Wildcats will now be forced to punt here. Tough call against Riverdale, and I, it didn't look to me like he was down, but uh, that's the call that goes, and they'll get their return man on the field. Roy Howard will punt, 14-7 to the score. Roy Howard not standing back too far. Gets his punt away. Once again, it gets a high spiral. It's angling toward the sidelines, 
It'll bounce at the five. It's at the one. It, nobody down the field to get it. Roy hit it so well, even the Wildcats quick guys could not get down there. Greg Kennedy, I think, was hustling at full tilt, but just couldn't get to the ball. He just boomed that one about 50 yards, and it'll be first down 10 yards to go for the Warriors at the 20. 11.02 to play. We're in the fourth quarter, 14-7 to the score. Now the Oak Ridge defense will have to do it once again and stop the Warriors here. They haven't scored since early in the ball game. The Wildcats down by seven, 14 to seven. The winner to play for the state championship. I formation, receivers left and right. Corey Carney, handoff, fullback, moves the ball forward to the 25 yard line. And that's where he's tackled. It'll be second down and about four. Nice play on first down for the Warriors. Yeah, it was, David. Uh, the Riverdale's been pretty content just to hand it to, to Marcus Smith on first down for the most part here in the second half. And yeah, I guess you can't argue with him. The guy's such a big, strong runner, and they, they're they wanting to work the clock as much as possible, and he's a good guy to have to do that on first down. You know, they've run that play, the same exact play. It looks like first down about ten times, and every time he's getting five or six yards, you know, why not keep going with it? Second down, four yards to go from the 25-and-a-half yard line. Two receivers to the right. Corey Carney, five-man front for the Wildcats. He'll roll to his left, tries to turn the corner, gets around the man and moves the ball across the 30, then bumped out of bounds to keep the clock going at around the 34-yard line. First down, 10 yards to go for the Warriors. 10-12 to go in the ball game. 14-7, the Riverdale Warriors on top of the Wildcats. That was a designed rollout right there, David. They thought they could get Carney, the speedy quarterback, to the outside, and they were certainly able to do that. Uh, good blocking on the part of the Warriors and a good run once again by Carney, and the clock continues to tick. Up to the line they'll come. First down, 10 yards to go. Oh boy, a turnover right here would be fantastic. The Wildcats on defense. Carney, first down, 10. Man in motion to the right side from the eye. The Wildcats showing blitz. Here comes the handoff. Boom! Big stick. Behind the line of scrimmage, back at the 33-yard line. The loss of two on the play. Second down, actually a loss of yard on the play. Second down, 11 yards to go. It looked like Josh Young just annihilated the man he was on. He drove the guy back about three yards. I believe uh, uh, Mike Howard and some other folks were in there right with him. A great play, Josh Young, by the young sophomore. Up to the line they'll come. Second down, nine yards to go. 9.28 to play in the ball game. 14 to seven to score. Two receivers to the right. Carney, once again facing everybody on the line. He rolls to his right, he turns, he pitches. The man is hit, breaks two tackles, breaks three and breaks three. Across the line he goes. A tackle saving, touchdown tackle up the field. Great run by Riverdale. They had him stuffed. Great option play, first and 10 Warriors. Those plays are just so frustrating, David. You know, you remember back uh, on the last couple of drives when Riverdale was stopped in the backfield, but somehow the guy squirted free and picked up a first. And once again right there, the Wildcats stopped the quarterback, forced him to pitch, and right there in the face of the pitch man was the Wildcat defender, but the Riverdale back was able to just catch it and somehow slip free and once again pick up a first. Eight minutes, 59 seconds to play in the ball game. First and 10 at the 46-yard line of Oak Ridge. Carney under center from the eye once again. He drops back to pass. Here's the little screen pass, incomplete. Intended to number 25, Bryant once again. The ball's well overthrown. That'll be second down 10. Stops the clock with 8.47 to play. 14 to seven, Riverdale on top of Oak Ridge. That's a good break right there for Oak Ridge, David, because it's, if that passes down a little bit and hits Fernando Bryant, it uh, may very well have been a touchdown because he had a lot of running room ahead of him. He's got blazing speed. He had one man to beat, and he's got so many great moves. I'd say it'd be hard to bring him down in the open field. The Wildcats trailing by a touchdown. Here comes the Riverdale Warriors to the line. The ball's at the 46-yard line. From the eye, two receivers to the left. Second down, 10 yards to go. 8.47 to play in the ball game. Carney under center. Will pitch to his tailback, Alvin Duke. Tries to get around the end. Big block. Turns the ball at the field, driven out of bounds by the Wildcats at around the 39-yard line. They'll be third down and about three. Eric Williams along with Roy Howard and Brick Kennedy there for the stop. Third down and about three and a half yards to go. Stops the clock again at 8.41 to play in the ball game. Third down and about three. I think if they stop him here, I think they'll punt this time. I would anyway, to try to back it up just a little bit. They don't gain a whole lot, I guess, if they punted it out, but the Wildcats need to make the play right here. Third down, three and a half yards to go. Up to the line will come Riverdale. They'll have a single running back. Actually, from the eye, once again, everybody 
stacked on the line. Confused. Up to the line they'll come. Third and three. Carney will hand it off on the draw. And they get great yardage out of it. First down yardage. And they'll score! Touchdown, Riverdale! Alvin Duke breaks to the outside, scores, and they lead it by a score of 20 to 7 with 8.31 to play in this ball game from Middle Tennessee State. Well, that makes it awfully tough, David, for the Wildcats now. They've got to come up with two scores in this final 8 minutes, 31 seconds, and once again, they ran the sweep to the near side. They just uh, isolated the Wildcats to where they had one man to beat. They got a good block downfield, and Duke, such an outstanding runner, he was able to score. Eight and a half minutes to play, and they'll go for the extra point. 20 to 7 to score, eight and a half minutes to play. It's a big extra point right here. The Wildcats still down and need two scores, and not a lot of time to go. To attempt the extra point will be number 10, Ryan Miller. Here's the kick. It's up. It's up, and it is good. But time on the field, our score. 8.31 to play in the ballgame, 21 to 7, Riverdale, and we'll be back in 60 seconds. Back here in Middle Tennessee State University, the Wildcats now trailing 21-7 to to the Riverdale Warriors. Wildcats, not a lot of time, eight and a half minutes to play in this ball game. Sean Williams, Sean Bohannon back to receive the kick. Here it is, a line drive kick. And Sean Bohannon will field it and pitch it back to Sean Williams at the 10, 15, 20. Down he goes to the 25-yard line, a long field to drive. Wildcats, not a lot of time, need to get down the field and score. Still two scores down, 8.25 to play, 21-7 to the score. Well, Oak Ridge certainly isn't sunk yet, David. They need to come up with some big plays, no question about that. They need to really, no, no need to really completely panic at this point. Oak Ridge just needs to sus sustain a drive, get something going, go down the field and, and pick up a big touchdown here and then worry about tying the ball game or winning it uh, at, from that point. From the 25-yard line, Doug Anderson and Tori Yancey wide to the left. Roy Howard wide to the right. Oak Ridge with a backfield split. First down and 10 from the 25-yard line. Jeff Miner has time to pass. Across the middle, Roy Howard can't make the catch. Nice crisp pass, just a little bit overthrown. Roy went up to get it, couldn't pull it away. It's second down, 10 yards to go. Couldn't really tell, David, uh, if Roy got his fingers on it or not from our vantage point. The pass was obviously high. Roy had to go up in the air to get it. Would have been an outstanding catch if he was able to make it. Tough break for Oak Ridge. Line of scrimmage will be the 25-yard line. Second down and 10. Roy was open that time. The pass just a little bit high. Keith Thrift along with Tori Yancey. Wide to the left. Roy Howard wide to the right here. From the I. Oak Ridge. Second down and 10 from the 25-yard line. Jeff Miner. Toss sweep. Sean Williams. Needs to get outside. Does not. Fumbles. Goes down at around the 26-yard line. It'll be third down. Nine yards to go, 7.49 to play in the ball game, 21 to 7. The Wildcats face with a third down and about eight and a half yards to go. The ball across the 25 at the 26. Yeah, it brings up a huge play right here. You know, Oak Ridge is definitely, they've got to get the chains going. They've got to get a first down right here. If not, you know that uh, Riverdale is going to keep the ball on the ground, ground out the clock with 7.27 left to go. Uh, big third down and nine coming up. Backfield split. Third down, nine yards to go. Looks like they want to come with everybody. Here comes the big rush. Jeff Miner's in trouble. Gets away from the rush. He's now sacked. I saw that coming. They came in with everybody except the coach. And let's see. Big sack all the way back down to the 14-yard line. And the Wildcats will be forced to punt. Great pass rush that time by the Riverdale Warriors. Yeah, they're ferocious, David. They're relentless, and they just uh, came with everybody that time. Speed from the middle, speed from the left, and speed from the right. And the Wildcats just weren't able to get everybody blocked. I mean, they had everybody up there. It's just a, a great call for Riverdale and a tough break for Oak Ridge. And Roy Howard will be punting from around the five-yard line. They'll get great field position out of this one. Roy needs to uncork another big one. Kind of a wobbly kick. Bounces and goes out of bounds at around the 45-yard line. A short field to drive for the Warriors. And not a lot of time. 6.35 to play. The Wildcats down 21-7 to to the Riverdale Warriors. And let's see, the Wildcats, not a lot of real estate for the Warriors to go. The ball is officially out at the 46 and a half yard line, closer to the 47, I guess. And it'll be first down, 10 yards to go for Riverdale. Up to the line, they'll come. Carney's a quarterback. From the eye, receivers left and right once again. <coughs> 6.35 to play, first and 10. They're in Oak Ridge territory. Carney drops back to pass. Goes down the field. A man is there. Here's the pass. It's overthrown. It's incomplete. Mike Gibson. No, it's Eric Williams defending on the play. And the man from Riverdale said he was bumped and shoved. 
Pass was well overthrown. The officials didn't want to make the call there. It'll be second down at 10. And the good thing about it is stops the clock with 6.29 to play in the game. Yeah, Riverdale's going for their throat, David, and it's not a bad idea. They felt like, you know, they had good field position here. They might as well go ahead and put it up in the air. They got great speed on the outside. They just laid it up too far. Up to the line they'll come from the 47-yard line. Single a new receiver, Jermone... Verge wide to the right side, single man wide to the left from the eye once again, second and 10 from the 47 yard line. Corey Carney, their quarterback, handoff, fullback, no place to go. Dropped right at the line of scrimmage, third down 10. Big stick once again by the interior of the Oak Ridge line as pushing and shoving goes on after the play. No flags or nothing of any major consequence, but uh, the Wildcats once again right there, plugging up the middle, shutting down Marcus Smith. He hasn't had a lot of running room tonight. A couple of five or six or seven yard gains, but other than that, the Wildcats have pretty much bottled him up. One brings up another big play. Excuse me, David. It's a third and ten right here. Oak Ridge has got to stop him here in order to get the ball back, and there's still plenty of time. There's six minutes to go in this game. 21-7 to seven, the score, third down and ten. 5.53 and counting. Carney with a full house backfield. Up to the line with a man in motion. Here's the handoff. Another quarterback will run. Cuts it inside. Picks up first down yardage as he moves the ball to the 35-yard line. I tell you, he's made the difference in the ball game. When they needed a big play, their quarterback is able to pick it up. First and 10, Riverdale at the 35. Those are just plays that this outstanding Riverdale team has just made all throughout the game. I mean, when they've had to make a play, by and large, they've made it. And right there, third down and 10. They run the option. They have that much confidence in the play. And he's able to just find a little crack on the other side of the Oak Ridge defense, cut it back, and go to the middle of the field and able to pick up the first. They'll be content to work as much time as they possibly can. They're at the Oak Ridge 35, first down 10. Once again, from the I formation, receivers left and right. Carney from the 35. Once again, that man comes in motion deep in the pattern. Hand off to the fullback who moves the ball forward for about three or four yards. Moving the ball to the 33-yard line. 5.08 to play in the ball game, 21 to 7. The clock now on the side of the Riverdale Warriors here as the Wildcats have seen them pick up big third down conversions throughout the night. I think they've only had to punt maybe twice. They've gone for it on fourth down a couple times. It's been an exciting game to watch. The Wildcats trail 21 to 7, 4.45 to play. It's second down and about six yards to go. Up to the line once again will come the Warriors. Receivers left and right. Riverdale under center. Quarterback is, and that is, Corey Carney. Second down and six. Here's the pitch to Duke. The Duke of Dale moves the ball forward across the 30 to the 27, where it'll be third down and about two yards to go. 426 and counting. Third down and three. They're in four down territory. They'll go for it on fourth down here. Hanks, I believe, they're on the stop. Third down three. Yeah, they're in no hurry whatsoever, David. Uh, Riverdale certainly is just going to milk this thing as long and as far out as they possibly can, which is what they're doing now. The play hasn't even come in yet. They now are uh, able to get to play. No hurry to get to the line at all as the clock's going to tick under four minutes. 21-7 to seven the score. Up to the line will come Corey Carney once again. From the eye they'll come. Receivers left and right. Quarterback Carney hands it off to the fullback. That's Marcus Smith. First down, 10 yards to go. Just straight ahead running, and he picks up great yardage as he moves to the 25-yard line. First down, 10 yards to go. They officially put him down at the 23, 3.47 to play, and the Wildcats just might not get their hands on the ball again as the Riverdale Warrior, Warriors continue to move the chains. And this gigantic crowd here in Middle Tennessee State starting to celebrate a Riverdale win, and it appears they're headed back to the Clinic Bowl. 3.36 and counting. They lead 21-7. to Yeah, that was a backbreaker right there, David, as once again Smith pounded up the middle, was able to find those chains and just sort of fall down and fall over them as now Riverdale stops the clock with a timeout, perhaps a player problem. Why don't we take one ourselves? We'll be back in 60 seconds. First down, 10 yards to go for the Warriors. 3.25 to go in the ball game. They have the ball first and 10 at the Oak Ridge. 23-yard line from the eye they'll come. Receivers left and right. Carney under center. First and 10. And he'll hand it off to the fullback. No, he'll run it himself. He moves the ball to the 15-yard line. I tell you one thing they don't do, they don't turn the ball over that much, and they don't get penalized that often either as they, they move the ball for a gain of about eight. It'll be second down and two yards to go. 3.07 to play, and the clock continues to tick down. Some of the fans beginning to head out, I guess trying to beat this traffic. It's going to be a massive traffic jam here at Middle Tennessee State. Capacity crowd on hand here for this ball game. It's been an exciting one. 21-7 to seven the score from the eye. 
receivers left and right. Once again, Carney brings him up, second down and two. Boy, I, I'd like to see him pass right here, and we pick it off and take it all away. I don't think it's going to happen, though. Hand off to the fullback, who scoots the ball forward for first down yardage as he moves the ball to the 12-yard line, 234 to play, and I don't think the Wildcats are even going to get their hands on the ball again. They're just going to methodically move the ball down the field. We're down to two and a half minutes to play. Mark, I, I don't know how long they've had. The, go ahead with your comments, Michael. I was just gonna say you're, you may be right, David. And you know Marcus Smith, he's a, he's their fullback. We've talked about him a lot tonight, and he's really uh, made some big runs on this glass drive. You know, Oak Ridge has stopped him for one yard gains and and done a pretty good job against him. But when he's had to pick up the first down, he's done so. And that time, just sort of got right on his offensive lineman's hips and just sort of finagled his way down the line and was able to fall forward for once again another first down run. 2-12 to play in the ball game. First down, 10 yards to go from the 13. Corey Carney. Rolling to his left, has clear sailing up the field. Turns the corner and is tackled. At around the five-yard line, a flag oh, goes down. We might have a, a penalty against the, um, perhaps a clip, Scott says, on the uh, Warriors. He moved the ball to the five-yard line. Now it's going to be a hold against the Warriors. One minute, 58 seconds to play. One thing about it, they like to score some points. It doesn't matter, you know, what the score is and how much time's on the clock. They go for it. And I guess they respecting the Oak Ridge offense ability to move the ball. 21 to 7. They move the chains back. It'll be first down at about 12. A minute 58 to play back to the 15-yard line. They step the penalty off. First down and about 12 yards to go at the 15. Play coming in from the sideline. Gerald Griffin brings it in. We're down to a minute 50. And, of course, Riverdale in no hurry. They lead 21 to 7 Oak Ridge, over Oak Ridge. 145 to play. Receivers left and right from the eye once again. First down, a long 12 to go. Minute 35 to play. Carney from the 15-yard line. Long count. Runs tackled at around the 13-yard line. The Wildcats might want to start thinking about stopping the clock. Uh, at this point, I don't know if that's what they'll do. We're down to a minute 19 to play. Second down and 10. The line of scrimmage will be at the 13-yard line. You've got to feel for the seniors down on the field for the Wildcats who've produced a 13-0 with, the, with the, of course, the juniors and the sophomores, but a 13-0 season in what many describe to be a rebuilding year. The Wildcats have come to the semifinals and taken on perhaps the best team in the state of Tennessee. Two receivers to the right, under a minute to play. From the eye, second down, 10 yards to go from the 13-yard line of the Wildcats. Carney will pitch to Alvin Duke. Duke is hit and tackled right at the line of scrimmage. Might have gained a yard. It'll be third down and about nine yards to go and the clock is ticking down 38 seconds to go you can already see the uh, anguish on the part of the Oak Ridge Wildcats across the way as this one's going to come to a close here the Wildcats are not going to be able to stop the clock they'll be taking on the Riverdale Warriors are headed to the clinic bowl pandemonium is about to break out of here as the student section from Riverdale is massing on the track with 13 seconds to play. And you gotta feel sorry for the seniors, but as I said before, it's been a great year. 13-0 in the game will come to a close on this play. The final score of the ball game.